the core of the sun is where all the nuclear fusion is happening. And all the other layers of the sun, I think, are easiest to think about if you consider what happens to the energy released during that fusion process. How does it make its way from the core of the sun out to the exterior? So all the, the, the fusion that happens in the core of the sun, we'll talk about that more on Wednesday, but essentially it's when uh, protons, or in other words, hydrogen, fuse together to form helium and produce gamma rays. So the highest energy possible light. And those gamma rays um, have to make their way out through this radiative zone. The kind of wiggly arrows here are supposed to indicate that the way that energy is transported through that layer is by light kind of weaving through. But this radiative zone is very dense. And so it doesn't just um, allow photons to travel freely out to the surface. Instead, they kind of bounce around, um, bumping off of the many atoms in that dense region and losing a little bit of energy over time so that as they reach the surface over long periods of time, I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of years to millions of years, then they emerge at the convection zone at a much lower energy. And so this is how the sun produces a um, continuous black body spectrum. That initial high energy light is uh, basically down converted to lower energies by all the interactions in the radiative zone. All right, so after the radiative zone, there's a layer called the convection zone. And this is where um, hot gas is rising and sinking um, so hot gas rising and cool gas sinking um, and mixing basically in that layer. This is how energy is transmitted through that layer. It's through the process of convection. And so the actual material is moving in that layer in contrast to the radiative zone where the actual material is just kind of jiggling in place but not necessarily mixing, right? Um, after the convection zone, this is finally where we reach what we call the photosphere. And this is now when photons are free to uh, stream away from the surface of the sun. So your textbook has an analogy that if you were standing at the edge of a crowd, maybe you're at a concert and your friend is somewhere in the crowd, um, then you can't see them until they make their way out toward the edge of the crowd because toward the center of the crowd, there's too many people in the way blocking your view, but then toward the edge of the crowd, you'd be able to find your friend because there's now a low enough density of people that you would actually be able to spot them in the crowd. And so it's kind of that way with photons um, leaving from the interior of the sun, they're going from a very high density environment to a low density environment. So finally, the photosphere is the first place where the density of atoms is low enough that a photon can just uh, you know, sneak out through the gaps between atoms rather than bumping into one and staying trapped. So we'll talk about this again in, in more detail on Wednesday, this transport in the interior. So the solar interior is the core radiative zone and convection zone. And now when we get to the photosphere, I guess this is the first uh, layer of the sun's atmosphere. So this is the low density region. Um, and this is where we see things like sunspots. Outside of that, there's a thin layer called the chromosphere and then the solar corona. So the, that's the the entirety of the solar atmosphere is photosphere, chromosphere, corona. 